uh, just to just to, just to uh, to already derail our, our introduction just for a moment. The last time I stayed in Georgia for like very long, we had to leave our hotel because these two guys were in a fight in the parking lot, and one of them pulled a rifle, like a hunting rifle, out of his truck and like pointed at the other guy. And I was like, "Okay, we gotta go," so we we left. Uh, I mean, that's pretty but, normal. Uh, I mean, so, that's that's fine. Yeah. You'd see that all the time. Yeah, and, yeah, and then we like went to a gas station, and Sam had like a she had like a traumatic experience because we were there, and then there was just a strange, withered old man sitting in front of the gas station. He was sitting on like a flat piece of cardboard, and he was like in a like a yoga sort of crisscross applesauce meditative position and he okay. had the longest like a long he looked like a wizard and he was just standing there and he was like all weather beaten and worn and sam was just like kind of looked at him and then there was a dog that was just eating garbage there was a ruptured trash bag laying in the parking lot it was just eating plastic and everything and she we, she didn't even get gas she was just like we gotta get the fuck out of here <laughs> so no 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 that she doesn't she like should have gone up to the guy and that's her request Clearly, she hasn't played enough yeah, that RPGs. Was definitely an NPC yeah, she should have. I got him said, yeah. you know, we requested a quest. He would have gone through like several lines of predetermined text, and then uh, you guys would have gotten like you know magic powers and stuff. That was a failure on her part. I know, it it was way to really let the family down, you know. Yeah. God damn it! Uh, you hate to see it. Yeah. And speaking of anyway. disconnects with reality, <laughs> yeah, uh, this episode is going to be Bloody Wednesday. Uh, the tagline for this is, you'll pray for Thursday. And uh, the more accurate, <laughs> you know, sort of tagline will be, you'll pray for this to end. Because it'll it'll take a while <laughs> to get there. <laughs> Why Wednesday? Well, so it's Why a Wednesday reference Wednesday? to the... Uh, uh, true event that it's based off of. So, uh, this is a 1987 or possibly 1988, depending on the review I looked at, a uh, horror thriller based on a true event. The 1984 San Yzerdro, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, McDonald's Massacre. Uh, except that it won't have any, any similarity to this event until the last five minutes of the movie. And when I say that, I, I'm not exaggerating to say, like, it's going to take forever to get there. I mean, literally the last five minutes of the movie will be the part that is a uh, reference to these, this actual massacre. Um, now are we... Evening news on television keeps reminding us we live in a violent world. After sundown, most of us try to keep off the streets and stay out of public parks. We feel safe in our homes behind locked doors. The last place we would feel threatened is our neighborhood coffee shop. The film you are about to see depicts what happened in one of these coffee shops. Hi, Jake. My car's ready, I assume. The mechanic is Harry. You'll find him in the back. Okay. Thanks, Jake. You, Harry? No, he's over there. My car. My car. Jake! Where's the motor? Jake, there's no motor in this car. My car! For God's sake, Harry! You, Mr. Gray, was gonna be here at 4 o'clock? What's the matter with you? I can't. You can't what? 
I can't put it together. Well, why not? I forgot. You've taken apart and put together a hundred cars like this. Now, how could you forget? Nothing fits. Nothing fits. I'm going to sue you, Jake. Look, Mr. Crazy, what if I'm on No, no way. Gerald here from my internal. No. Is there a McDonald's imagery in this movie, or is it like a generic? Do they have like some sort of no faux McDonald's? No, there's no McDonald's at all. There is, in fact, okay, no eating establishments again until literally the last five minutes of the movie, and it's more a Denny's, ah, actually explicitly called okay. a coffee shop. Yeah, so no, we're fine. Okay. Nothing good. Ben, Jake, come get your brother. Something's wrong. Real wrong. Yeah. Right now. All right, Harry. Out with it. You been drinking? Smoking something? Taking pills? Nothing like that. I just can't make things fit anymore. What the hell do you mean they don't fit? All them parts are made to fit. Anything comes apart, fits together again. You don't understand, Ben. You just don't understand. Make me understand. Go ahead. Make me understand. Me. I don't fit. If I don't fit, how can I make anything else fit? Get him out of here. He's fired. The only, the, I'm going to say this. The only movie, there are only two movies that I really remember ever seeing an actual McDonald's in. And one is Coming to America. Because yeah. isn't that, there's McDonald's in that, isn't there? I haven't seen it since Pretty I was sure. a kid. And I never watched the sequel because I was like, why would you make the sequel all this time? It didn't need later? a sequel. No. No. And then Mac and Me is the other, which is the E.T. ripoff from the 80s or maybe early 90s. I think it's the, I think it's like the late 80s yeah. about a little alien that lives on a planet with his family and they, for whatever planet they live on, I forget, they drink some sort of Coca-Cola-esque substance from the crust of their planet with straws. Uh, they get They get sucked into a spaceship and they end up on Earth and and the titular Mac becomes friends with a kid in a wheelchair and the rest is just cinematic gold. Uh, but there's a scene where Mac is in a teddy bear costume so he can blend in and these kids are all just going wild and dancing on the, like dancing in the booths and on the counters at McDonald's. It's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. Well, this but, movie does yeah. feature I, a talking teddy bear. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Just to pull that tangent back in. On the other hand. Don't hate me, Ben. Let's go home. Sunday's Mother's Day. Let's go to the cemetery and put some flowers on her grave. I'd like that. Oh, I forgot. I promised Annie I'd take her and her mother to Disneyland on Sunday. Look, we'll do it some other time. I gotta run, Harry. Got an appointment.
wait. No. No. Can you give me any reason, Mrs. Curtis, why your husband would appear totally naked in church? He's not my husband. We're divorced. I have no idea why Harry would do anything so crazy. Is he crazy, doctor? We don't use that term in the medical profession. Sounds crazy to me. You don't seem to care much about his welfare. He can drop dead for all I care. Was he cruel to you? Did he beat you? None of that. Harry is a loser. I gave him the best six years of my life. Like I said, he's a born loser. I don't want anything to do with him. We can't just turn him loose in the streets. He should have a place to go and someone to be with for a while. Well, don't look at me. You can go now, Mrs. Curtis. He isn't dangerous, is he? That'll be all, Mrs. Curtis. You're in the psychiatric ward of the county hospital. You are locked up and you cannot leave until you're certified of being capable of taking care of yourself. After my initial examination, I filed a report. I said you were dangerous. A walking time bomb. I don't feel dangerous. You don't feel anything. That's sick. Maybe you're the one that's sick. I'm hanging around with too many loonies. You refuse to communicate. You behave as though you're all alone in this world. You got it all wrong, Doc. I don't follow little girls into the park. I'm not about to mug some old lady. The only thing I use a knife for is to cut bread. I don't hate anyone. If you were 80, Harry, I could buy that. But you're 30. You're strong, full of energy. Try plugging up a spout of a tea kettle under a big flame. It blows up. If it gets too hot, we'll get out of the kitchen. The whole world's one big kitchen. There's nowhere to hide. So where do I run? You don't. You adapt. It's the only way to survive. Adapt. I'll get a job. Eat three meals a day, get plenty of exercise, and take my vitamin C. Don't smart-ass me. Well, then stop bugging me! My brother Ben will vouch for me. He's a... he's an accountant. He's a big deal CPA. I've spoken to your brother. He's left the decision to me. So test me. Besides, I thought I passed all your tests. You did. So why am I still here? I have a gut feeling you're not ready. Maybe it's something you ate. Saying all the wrong things. Unfortunately, Harry, we're overcrowded in this facility. And I have no legal right to detain you any further. I'm going to do this against my better judgment. I'm going to release you on probation. But you'll have to report to me twice a week for the next three months. Thanks, Doc. The hotel's been closed for a few years. I keep the books for the owner so you can stay here as long as you want. Harry. How do you feel, Harry? All right. Harry, I put a bell and a telephone on the desk in the lobby. Now, there's a furnished suite. It's up on the top floor. 
telephone in that suite also. So call me if you need me, huh? This is the front door key. Now keep the doors locked. I gotta get back to my office. Hurry, I'll stop by your apartment. I'll pick up your things and bring them over later tonight. Come on, I'll show you where the kitchen is. church naked. Well, when I heard the church bells, they woke me up, and it was Sunday morning, so I figured I might as well go to church. Yeah, but why didn't you wear any clothes? I thought I was dressed. I mean, it's never happened to me before. It could happen to anybody, Ben. It only happened to you. I have to get back to my office. Smart thing calling the police and not trying to apprehend them yourself. You're a good citizen, Mr. Curtis. You're a dead man. You know, his brother leaves the right. apartment or no, uh, hotel, whatever it is, without hearing the biker gang like that's apartment. like the room next door trashing the place. That the police yeah. show up for, and then there's a random coffee pot just laying there. So somebody made fresh coffee in this building that's supposedly abandoned, except for him. So is it happening? Is it not happening? Yeah, it's kind of kind of hard to suss out. Yeah. Also, his uh, yeah, his hotel room is reminding me a lot of the apartment in Eraserhead. Actually, <laughs> it looks it's just very just like bleak and like very um. Uh, minimalistic you know there's not a lot in there yeah but yeah so i'm also getting kind of some uh a little bit of joaquin phoenix and uh joker vibes you know a little bit as far as um you know some a, a person who is having a mental breakdown but then you're not like you said with the ambiguity you never really know what interactions are real and which are completely imagined um yeah but it's uh i don't know kind of it kind of strange and hard to take seriously i feel like if you were if this was like meant to be like some sort of cautionary tale like i don't know it's Please, 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 please
Not until you tell me who you are. What are you doing with that wrench? Making some strange noises outside. There was, there was somebody pounding on my door. You been drinking, Harry? Oh, I don't drink. The hotel's empty. Nobody was pounding on your door. Maybe I dreamt it. You scared the hell out of me. Free place to flop. Just play it cool. Let's not blow it. Okay. I'll be a little quiet. Good. I'll call you in a day or two, huh? I love, though, the part where there's the dismantled car, but, like, the pieces, he doesn't have a whole lot of pieces for it to be, like, because for that guy's reaction to be, like, my car, what have you done? <laughs> so you're thinking, like, there's going to be a huge pile of, like, scrap or whatever, and he's just got these tiny parts, like, laid out on these little, <laughs> laid out before. Oh, yeah, it looked like, like uh, Legos or Tinker Toys. That was clearly yeah. not an entire engine. <laughs> but I'd be more concerned. What happened to the rest of the engine? Like the the actual parts that go into making up an engine. Where right. are those? <laughs> or did like, he break it down that far? You know, was it like I don't know, filing things off? Yeah, I don't know. It's very silly. But you can't tell me they couldn't just find an engine like at a junkyard or something and like have it. You know what I mean? Just. Have that move, have someone move that into the building, and be like, okay, this is the engine for this scene. But they're like, nah, just they're like, we don't know shit about car cars, just throw a bunch of nuts and bolts on the ground, and that's that's the engine, right? Yeah, that's fine.
right away, please. You're new here, aren't you? How long have you been working here? I started here the first night this hotel opened over 40 years ago. Been here all my life. Only job I ever had. Only job your whole life? Lucky, I guess. What about 1327? She ordered coffee. We don't rent that room anymore. Years ago, someone rented 1327 and jumped out the window. Three months later, there was a repeat. Since then, 1327 has been locked up. There's no one there. I'm a guest. Who are you? Security. Doors are made to knock on. Now, what is it? How did you get in? The hotel is closed. I registered at the desk. What's wrong with you? That must be my husband. Hello? Mrs. Rupton? Yes. Jumped. That was 28 years ago. But the robe. I tried to stop her. She jumped. 28 years ago. What the hell are you talking about? There's nobody in that hotel but you. Oh boy, what bellboy? Bellboy, and nobody's ordering room service. The hotel's empty, I tell you. You hear me? Empty. Just pull yourself together. Stop talking like a nut. Well, where are you? In bed? Get out of bed and take a hot bath. No, 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 I, I can't come over today. I just got too many appointments. 
Get out of bed, take a hot bath, and get some rest. To come down to the station to sign the report. I'll get down there as soon as I can. Could you leave us alone? Thanks again for your help. What were you doing on that ledge? I wasn't trying to jump. You were naked the same way you went to church that day. Damn it, can't you keep your clothes on? I told you. I was in the bathtub when it happened. I don't want to hear what happened. I want you to keep your clothes on, and I want you to stay inside the hotel. Okay. Jeez. Why does all this have to happen to me? Dude, you suck. <laughs> he really does. It you know, and I think that the the movie is doing a good job of illustrating how selfish family members can be or friends can be um, if you happen to have mental health issues and people treat you like you're a burden. Um, yeah, I think it does a good job of yeah. painting the kind of uh, painting a picture of the kind of person that his brother is. Like, on one hand, like, I, yeah, his brother sucks and and he, you know, is acting like it's just such a huge inconvenience that he like he's the one that's suffering and not his brother who is having these terrifying hallucinations i've got but, so much uh, to do while i'm sitting there smoking a cigarette brother. or cigar like, i know I, exactly I, I think he does care about his brother but it's just like but people have a tendency to be very self-centered and to pretend like they're the victims of you know whatever situation is going on people are just like that that's just a unfortunately a lot of people are like that but yeah but at the same time <laughs> something else is happening so this is the we have uh two references to the pot of coffee at this point we've got the pot of coffee that just happens to be there when he first comes in and then we have the hallucination ghost whatever requesting a pot of coffee so there's something and then the reference to yeah. coffee at the very beginning of the movie so they're clearly doing something with that? I don't know. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Maybe it's... Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe it's like foreshadowing where this whole, you know, scenario is going to end Maybe. at the coffee shop, but I don't know. It's it's weird. And the whole situation... I'm in the weeds about the bikers. I really don't know I get, are if they they're real? really Are they there. not real? Is that happening? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's weird. And like, did I imagine before? Were they calling him like gay slurs and stuff before? No, they were. Did I imagine no. that? Or no, you did not. Okay. Were, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of there. Well, not a lot, but I feel like there are some like homoerotic undertones, uh, or or may, or maybe some sort of issues with sexual repression. The thing with the snake, yeah. um, but also the person, uh, you know, shooting the movie. They, I mean. 
they're just like, let's, they're like, well, the director or whoever is just like, you know what? We need a shot of a snake, you know, squirming up right next to this guy's bulge. Like, we got to get, and then they're also like, we got to get a, we got to get a shot of this guy's ass. So, you know, that he's naked on the fire escape. It's just like, I don't know. It's funny. It's funny to me, you know. Yeah, it's got to be a metaphor <laughs> for something. I don't know. Something. Yeah. I don't know. There's a message here. It's like, a, it's a, yeah. There's a message somewhere, some somewhere here within all the schlock that we're trying to get through. Yeah, within the know. it's an interesting hallucination story. within a hallucination within a commentary on the social ramifications of mental illness. Yeah, I don't know. What kind of hotel is this? It really just looks like an abandoned, like crack den or something that his brother is just making him stay at. Is what it what it looks well, like. I, I think that's I think that's exactly it. Yeah, it's literally a literally building that's condemned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's just sticking his brother there because it's convenient. He doesn't want to have to um, help him yeah, himself. He's like, I'm not gonna let this not stay at my house. You know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've got things to do with my family. We're going to Disneyland. I know you just had a mental breakdown, and I just rescued you from an institution. I, and I would love to help you, but my kids want to go to Disney, so you know I'm gonna stick you here. Um, it's gonna be fine. Just try not to be naked as much. you get here over the wall i want you to leave don't be afraid i'm not gonna hurt you if you don't leave i'm calling the police go ahead what is it you want you invited me i did no such thing so i invited myself stop looking at me like i'm an animal all right you want to talk? Talk. I didn't come here to talk. One cold ass Swede. I haven't played in years. Like, 
is uh, something else. Oh, but I, I've had a night terror before that reminded me of the snake scene. Uh, the first time, or it wasn't a night terror, it was a, like a sleep paralysis. Oh. Um, it was a long time ago. And like, I remember being in bed and like, I was like half asleep and half awake. I couldn't move or anything. And I remember seeing, I was so sure, so sure that there was this huge snake like slithering across my floor. And like I jumped up and like I turned on the lights and I was tearing my room apart trying to find the snake that I was convinced was there. And obviously I never found anything, but that's what it reminded me of. Um, yeah, very weird. Very weird. Sleep paralysis. I don't recommend it. It's not fun. No. <laughs> if you cannot have it. Don't do don't, that thing. Don't have it. Which there's nothing you can do about it because it just happens sometimes to people, you know. You never really know yeah. if it'll happen to you. But yeah, anyway, uh, this movie is something else. And those bikers, they're just real mean guys. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I remember my point that I was going to make, though, about like kind of I feel like there's some, you know, um, repressed, maybe gay undertones is that like, well, for one thing, we don't know for sure if they're real at all. Um, but then, you know, saying, uh, slurs, yelling slurs at him, which I mean, bikers do that sometimes anyway, you know, you never really know, but also I feel like there's something sort of like, you know, they were trying to get in the bathroom with him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Also, I feel like, uh, bikers, I, I feel like this might offend a lot of bikers. Um, but I don't think it should because I don't see it as a bad thing. But I feel like a lot of bikers sort of uh, dress in sort of a queer presenting way sometimes. Um, maybe it's, uh, you know, which I know, which is kind of, it's sort of, they wouldn't like it because they, they you know, try to put on like a macho facade. But, um, but you know, all, it's, it, I think it's like an intersectional type thing where the leather, you know what I mean? Like, Le leather fetishists with someone you know, there's bikers. a Venn diagram with uh that in the middle yeah 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 <laughs> exactly yeah and you know and they overlap sometimes i think is my whole point but uh I, that's really just a, a crude segue um into just me briefly mentioning a movie that i do not recommend we watch a lot of crazy movies on here um and we usually encourage people to watch them but there's Yep. A movie that's like from the like late seventies, I think, uh, maybe early eighties, called Pink Angels, which sounds like it would be like a fun um, so biker comedy. Yeah, yeah, but it's actually not. It's well, it's about the, this um, group of gay bikers who go around like causing mischief and stuff, but like pretty light stuff compared to what you know, like Hell's Angels would get into. But they, yeah. it was kind of like a fun movie. But then it has like a really dark turn where they all end up dead and it's just like, you know, I don't know. I mean, like I get the times have changed, but you know, I I feel like you can see you can look at some things as like a as like a product of their time, but you have to like decide what you can look past and what you can't. And this is a movie that that was a movie that I couldn't because it was just it wasn't like anything was tongue in cheek. It was just not it was just in bad form you know it was just in bad faith and it's just i don't want to go into too much detail about it but if you ever people if you ever see if you're ever like at a um an antique store and you see a bunch of old movies and you see one that looks like it's got a bunch of fun and cool gay bikers on the front don't watch it because or just don't watch the ending if you watch everything else but the ending it might be all right because it has some fun moments but anyway, last Thursday. What about last Thursday? You don't remember? I don't know what you're talking about. I came to your house. You must have dreamt it. I didn't dream it. Why are you denying it? You actually believe you came to my house? And you believe you spent the night with me? Harry, listen to me carefully. 
You never came to my house. We never spent the night together. It never was. I wouldn't lie to you. The worst thing I could do is to make you believe something didn't happen if it did. Please believe me. You know it, but you still don't believe me. FBI, may we come in? We've got a report that uh, someone up on the top floor has been aiming a rifle at a passing plane. The hotel's closed. I'm the only one here. Well, where do you stay? Upstairs. Do you own a rifle? No. Can we see your room? Did you aim this broomstick at the plane? There's no law against playing with a broomstick, but it's a bad idea. I wouldn't do it again if I were you. Should we write him up? I think we look silly in a report. Let's just drop it.
place to run now, is there? Where do you think a teddy bear's gonna help you, huh? What? We got you now. Verdict, Your Honor. Sure, Teddy. Guys, nuts. They played Russian roulette on us. You had no right to be there. But the guy's a weirdo. It ain't safe to walk the streets with this guy loose. Pigs give us a bad time. That faggot! You ruined my best pair of jeans! Yeah, well, you still stink. Go take a shower. Go get him. He's a dead man. Drink? Oh, no, thanks. 
Don't you find that's a little odd for you to come here at this hour? No, I don't pay any attention to time. You mind if I just sort of stay here until morning? No, you can sleep on the couch. I'll get you a pillow and blanket. got canned. You cost us our best account. We lost a whole fleet of trucks because of you. Hell, Jake, you know I'm the best mechanic in this garage. Well, you were. I gotta go back to work. Jake, I'm begging you. Look, I don't own this joint. I'm only the manager. How am I gonna explain it to the boss? Don't tell him un until I make good. No. no, I just can't take that chance. Jake, Jake, take me back. Something bad is gonna happen. Now, what are you gonna do? Burn this joint down? My... Give me a break. I hate to see a man beg. Look, it's, it's pretty slow in the repair department. But, uh, well, you used to be pretty good in the paint shop. I'll do anything you say. I swear I will. Hey, Fred, set Harry up in the paint shop. Okay, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Hey, Fred, is Harry finished with that blue paint job? Sure did, Jake. Should be finished by now. straight blue, but I figured, hell, every car is blue, green, or black, but this, this is really something. Fred! George! Why did I do this? I should have known better. What are you going to learn, Jake? What are you going to learn?
wanted something, Mr. Curtis. I'm desperate, Sydney. What seems to be the problem? I've met a girl, and for the first time in my life, I've got a chance. But I have to show her that I can make good. I presume you're speaking of money, Mr. Curtis. That's it, Sydney. I need a big chunk of dough. I don't have any. I know that, but you've been around a long time. You, you must have had lots of opportunities. Just give me a tip and I'll take care of the rest. I have seen opportunities to get rich quick, but they're always dangerous. I'm willing to stake my life. Do you recall my telling you about the two suicides from room 1327? I saw the lady jump. The other was a man, a jewelry salesman from New York. His name was Walter Burns. He came once a year carrying a suitcase full of uncut diamonds. He always rented the same suite, 1327. He stayed for a week and sold from the room, never left the hotel. His last trip here, I met him in the lobby. I was the only one permitted to carry a suitcase. And that very night, he jumped to his death. The full suitcase of uncut diamonds has never been found. Maybe someone stole them. No. I carried it to his room, laid it on his bed, he tipped me, I left, and he bolted the door from the inside. He had no visitors that evening. How can you be sure? He always hired the house detective in Lou Kramer to come sit in the corridor all night next to his door. Lou said that Mr. Burns was in his room alone till he jumped. And the diamonds are still in the hotel. They most certainly are. Well, how come you never found them? Well, I've looked. Everybody searched, but no one ever found where Mr. Burns hid them. What good is that gonna do me? You ask if I knew an opportunity to get rich quick. We could look for them together. I'll split it with you, Sidney. I've lost my taste for money, Mr. Curtis. But I'll give you a lead. Please, I, I need something. Mr. Burns still walks around this hotel. You said he committed suicide. Well, for a few of us, we can still make contact. And you're one of the few, Harry. Why don't you find Mr. Burns? Talk to him. He's kept the secret these many years. Maybe he'll confide in you. Well, how can I find this, Mr. Burns? I've never seen him around here. I'd go to his room. 1327. I've had some bad experiences in 1327. You said you were desperate. I warn you. It's a risky business. Why should I do that, Harry? Why? We're strangers. Mr. Burns, I'm in a bad way. If I'm so bad off, I have to turn to strangers. I'm beginning to feel like you felt the night that you jumped. I didn't jump. I was pushed. The house detective, Lou Kramer, sneaked into my room in the middle of the night and pushed me out the window. But I fooled him. Yes, I fooled him. He never found the suitcase.
do I find Miss Kramer? Have you noticed strange footsteps in the corridor? Coffee pots. Still brewing. In the kitchen. Lights left on. Cigar butts. Still smoking. That's Kramer. Every night. He stands out in the street, watches your room till the lights go out. And then, then he sneaks into my room and searches for my suitcase. You want that suitcase, Harry? you security what are you doing here i'm looking for a lost article the suitcase maybe you never give up do you i know it's still here somewhere that suitcase belongs to walter burns he's dead it belongs to anyone finds it he promised it to me that man's promises are no good Where'd you hear that? It's the truth. Hey, mister, that was so long ago. That's ancient history. You didn't answer my question. He jumped. You can read it in the police report. You file that police report. Just what the hell do you want? The suitcase was never found. It belongs to me. Hey, if you're looking for a split, Forget it. It's all mine. What'd you do that for? I'm going to murder you. You're crazy, man. Move. There's a pool 13 stories down. If you're lucky, you'll just break your neck. Hey, you can keep the suitcase. The diamonds are all yours. Just let me get the hell out of here. I promise, I'll never come back. I give you my word of honor. Who claims his word of honor? You and me take a walk.
know something bad is gonna happen. You just don't know when. So sweat a little. Just like you made us sweat at the hotel. I could have wasted you right in the street, but I didn't. Because it's more fun bringing you here. What were you looking at in the window? A machine gun? You'd like to have it, wouldn't you? Well, how you holding? Show me your green. This is the best persuader in the world. Forget it. Guns are no good. If you get caught with a gun, you wind up in the slammer for a long stretch. Even knives are bad. Even knives are bad. But this baby right here, the pigs pick you up. You throw it in the gutter. DA's got no case. He's run armed. That's the difference between playing him. You mugged him. You claim he's a fag. And he tried to proposition you. You had to rough him up a little. The judge sends you walking with the warning. Forget guns. They're no good. You still want that gun in the window? I'm gonna get it for you. You know why? Yes. You can't figure it out, so I'll spell it. There's a lot of fat citizens in this town who think they've got it made with their gold chains and their Mercedes and their credit cards. I hate the bastards. Crumbs they throw you. 335 an hour, minimum wage. Shit, man, I eat steak every night. It costs me 15 bucks. My body needs the protein. I'd starve to death at 335 an hour. So get a job, get an education, learn a skill so they can pay you four bucks an hour. I mugged a man the other day for $1,500. Took me two minutes. That's earning power. And this is the best persuader in the world. You point a gun, and some of them don't believe it's loaded. You use a knife, they want to fight. One smash in the mouth with this, and they got a 4000 bucks dentist bill. Are you reading me, man? I'm trying to educate you. What the hell are you going to do with a machine gun? Music. sure can't take care of you. You have free rent here. My lease is up. I'll stay here till we find another place. Don't open that. Why not? Don't. I decided we'll make a fresh start, Harry. I'm going back with you. You want to go back to that nut house? You can't take me back. Oh, no? You're out on probation in your brother's custody. Then transfer that custody to me. Ben wouldn't do that. He did. Do you want to see the papers? If you want to stay out, you better behave yourself. I'd rather be back in there for the rest of my life than go back with you.
You once said you loved me. That you couldn't live without me. What's changed you, Harry? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Just someone I met. You mean someone you picked up? She wasn't a pickup. No. Were you properly introduced? You make everything sound so dirty. Have you slept with her? I've never even kissed her. True love. Are you in love with her? What if I am? Forget it. You're never going to see her again. You can't stop me. I can stop her. She's supposed to be your doctor. I can sue her for seducing my husband. You are a bitch. If I am, you made me one. Can't you see we're no good for each other? You're no bundle of joy. But we did have some good times. If we did, I don't remember them. You want to be with this hustler. Why are you doing this to me? Did it ever occur to you that maybe I had some feelings left? I loved you once. I married you. Does that mean anything to you, Harry? A lot's happened since you left. I'm not the same person I used to be. You look the same to me. She's poisoned your mind against me. I've hardly even discussed you with her. Do you want to see her again? Take a bath. Why don't you shave? Look, you're young, you're healthy, you're a skilled mechanic. Skilled mechanics earn a living. You get a new apartment and a new car. You live like real people. If you want to stay out of the nut house, you'll work hard and prove to me you're still a solid citizen. Why don't you shave? I don't want to feel your beard in bed. Look, I got this doctor's private phone number. You're going to call her in my presence and tell her to get lost. Tell her if she tries to see you or even call you again. I'll ruin her. Are you listening to me, Harry? Harry, will you undo my strap? Harry?
been a terrible day, Daddy. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow? Only rich people have tomorrows. Doesn't anybody care what happens to us? I doubt if anyone knows we're alive. All I know is that we have a state. Harry? It's Ben, open up! Who's here? I'm alone. I heard you talking to somebody. Nobody's here. I heard another voice answering you. What's that doing here? been with me a long time, Ben. Don't you remember? You were talking to him, weren't you? Yeah. I suppose he talks back to you. Sometimes. You know teddy bears can't talk. No. So how can you carry on a conversation with him? How long have you been doing this? Since I was a kid. That's why you kept him. He and I have been through a lot, Ben. You know, he's more of a friend to me than you are. That's gratitude. That's the thanks I get for taking care of you. Sorry to be such a father, Ben. I got bad news, Harry. They sold the hotel. Our wrecking crew is coming to tear it down. You'll have to move. Move? Where am I going to move? I have to find another place. Where? I don't know. Harry, you got to shape up. I don't know how much longer I can help you. Yes, I played the market and I guessed wrong. I'm broke. If Ann finds out she's going to throw me out. Sorry for your troubles, Ben. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder whether it's worth it. You, you struggle and sweat to pile up a few bucks for your old age, you end up busted. Still 100 years old. You. The whole system's falling apart. You know, I keep the books for 50 small corporations. They're all in hot water. Even the banks are in a mess. Stay out of them right now. Most of them close up. I can go to Canada, Ben. Canada? It takes 10 years for a foreigner to get a work permit in Canada. Well, how about Africa or Australia? You never have been. You can't cope. Look, if you're older, I can get you in a home, but right now you don't qualify. There's got to be some place for me. We should have had this talk years ago. Why are you sweeping it under the rug? Well, I can wash dishes. They don't need dishwashers anymore. Fast food places use paper plates and throw them away. I could fry hamburgers. They only hire high school kids. I'm not proud, Ben. If I have to, I'll, I'll beg. You need a license to beg. You've got to be a cripple to get a license. Ben, make me a cripple. That's crazy talk. You said I wasn't right. Well, I didn't mean that way. Lane, come by. No. I called her. Told her about my predicament. She wants to come back to you. You shouldn't have done that. I had to. Who else you got? Don't go in there. I got to Don't! Lane wants you back. I guess she found out that life's not so rosy for a divorcee. I know you don't want her back, but she might be good for you right now. Be nice to her and you'll get along. You know, you don't have to love her to be nice to her. I haven't loved my wife for years. And I'd be lost without her. You've got no choice, Sherry. You're just hanging there, kid. I'm still your big brother. 
there so was a dog in the bathtub, that. though. Yeah. So you assume that she just he just hallucinated just he just uh, imagined that whole world. Yeah, exactly. So what part of this movie did actually happen? So yeah. he's got that broom handle and he's shooting at the airplanes and then the <laughs> FBI show up. But they don't notice the biker gang that had broken in yeah. in the meantime. And then there's the whole like teddy bear trial thing where he finds a gun out of yeah. who knows where. But the bikers were there the later on and they remembered being like the Russian roulette thing. So that might have happened. Oh. Right. Very weird. Uh, yeah, because normally if there's like a scene where you're, you know, where you can like sort of put two and two together and realize, like, oh, they're probably hallucinating. The, the character, most of the time it's sort of agreed upon that character has to be present for you to assume that it could be potentially their own, you know, imagination. But maybe he was right. thinking about it. But then I don't know. It's just all strange because then there's the scene with the biker at the bar and it's like, why? that seems very out of character. Why would he allow him to survive? Unless, I mean, I guess they make some sort of weird deal that he's going to kill a bunch of yuppies, I guess. I don't know. Um, which, by the way, I love that monologue. I really, actually really love that monologue about the using the, um, the stick or the baton or whatever that was instead of using a knife or a gun. I thought oh, that the was... lead pipe. Yeah. yeah, lead pipe. And he's like, yeah, this is the best negotiator around or whatever. I thought I like that. I like that uh, that bit. That was good. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's just so much to unpack. This movie, uh, his weird hallucinations that he's having an affair with his with his psychiatrist. Uh, yeah, and so also even, if, scene, even if that was like made up, she let him sleep on his couch, or uh, he slept on her couch. Who would yeah. do that? Like, I know you're crazy, but we have to let you go. But yeah, sure. You show up at my house at the middle of the night. Yeah, you can sleep on my couch and, you know, we'll make breakfast in the morning. It'll be great. Who would do that? You know? I, I love the scene, though, where he's imagining, well, we don't know for sure if that really happened, but where he's playing the piano and then she's like, Harry. And she looks like a she looks like a big white stingray. And the way she was just like hey, undulating with her thing, <laughs> or like an eighties like Bale. hair metal music video. It was like uh, some yeah. white snake playing in the background. You know, very silly. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. This guy's got a lot of issues. It's really hard to tell what's going on with him. Uh, I do stand by like sort of the weird psychosexual situation with him and the other men. And the gun and everything. Because, I mean, I don't know. And, and plus, like, there's the whole thing with, like, the biker mentioned before, like, when he's talking about a judge, you know, being able to, or not being able to um, do anything about you having the pipe because you can just say, well, someone thought I was gay and propositioned me. I feel like, the, like, either the, either Harry has issues with his sexuality or if these bikers are real maybe they do i don't know it's just that there's just so much i, I feel like there's a lot of uh projecting um also he harry despite the fact that he is attracted to his doctor he yeah. seems very awkward with women uh yes. which i mean doesn't necessarily mean anything but it's almost like it's like he's enthralled by them but then also kind of i don't know it's sort of Maybe maybe it's just mostly how he feels about his wife. They also seem kind of like repulsed by her in a way. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just sort of just going by what I'm seeing with my, you know, sleep deprived brain. Uh, yeah. But but also I'm you know mentioning all this about like repressed, uh, you know, sexuality and things like that because I I'm thinking also, you know, from not in the same vein, but I think about you know people I knew or or even myself when I was younger when I wasn't really coming to full terms with things that I was feeling and I think that this is all the more reason for people to encourage other people to work all their shit out get all of your yeah. issues if you can get help for them because you know life's too short to just push everything inside and eventually you know end up at a hotel where there may or may not be ghosts and bikers 
and a detective and a bag of snakes. And a bellboy that looks somewhat like Robert England. Sort uh, of. Yeah, he does. A little bit. They look like they could be related. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, also, I love the, the whole thing with the night watchman, or not the night watchman, the like detective or whatever. Yeah, we were trying to find the the suitcase full of gems. That, yeah. He's a, kind of like a Columbo esque sort of guy. I don't know. <laughs> Although Columbo but was again, involved in that. So, yeah. was he a ghost too, or a hallucination of a ghost? So, it was like a the bellboy told him about this other ghost that was there. <laughs> That the, I guess the ghost was trying to get the diamonds from that other ghost, and to get the diamonds, he pushed that ghost out the window. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know if it was. But then the bag was a bag of snakes. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm kind of like, was it even, was he like a ghost or was he a real person? Because I don't think he was. That's also tried that, that's also how they tried to rationalize the pots of coffee and the cigarette butts and everything was that there was just some old man who used to be a detective and he has not given up trying to find the suitcase for the last however long years. it's been 40 years or whatever so i don't know it, this, this movie just like raises more questions like many movies that we show it raises more questions than it answers yes but it's interesting i i uh i do appreciate the way that his brother is talking about even the biker talking about like how the system doesn't work for everybody and how it leaves a lot of people to either work some sort of you know menial job that doesn't pay much and hope that you can eventually save up for retirement when you're old or even harry like resorting to wanting to be disabled so he yeah, can really make me into a cripple so i can survive right. yeah. yeah like that's just so, that's so sad yeah. and you know this was in the 80s but i mean it's... well you, you in the still... 80s you had a uh stock market crash you had a depression um yeah you again you had the mental health hospitals getting shut down by the government so right. all of this yeah. was kind of going on during this same time period the time period this movie was made yeah, sort of. A, this movie, I feel like, is kind of like it's kind of crying out against, you know, Reaganomics and in its own in its own way. And I feel like there are things that you know we can sort of we can still see that it's just this relevant. I feel like you could make a movie like this that wouldn't be that much different, you know, if you did a modern day, you know, a modern modern day adaptation. I feel like it wouldn't be that much different as far as the way that it portrays. You know, people struggling, but yeah, uh, I think there might be more to this movie than we initially thought, or maybe that's a hallucination of mine. I don't know. Don't forget that, Harry. Hotel's being torn down. I have to get out tomorrow. Does your brother know? He's the one that told me. He's in big trouble himself. I think it's really dark. Come on, Harry. Sit down. Hear what, Harry? There's always
always a drum beating out there. Sometimes louder, sometimes softer. Always, always beating. Since when have you heard this drum, Harry? I don't remember when it started. you live, Harry? I stay at the airport. They won't bother you there for a couple of days. I've been reviewing your tapes. I understand. I want to help you. But you have to show me how. You won't let me inside you. If you could see inside my head. If you sign yourself in the hospital, I can see you every no, day. No, no, they'll never let me out. Where are you going, Harry? I got things to pack up at the at the hotel. I got. Please, stay a while. No, I've overstayed my welcome. I can't play. Never could. Chief of staff. I've just seen Harry Curtis. He needs to be readmitted. I'm afraid that's impossible, Doctor. I tell you, we must act immediately. Why can't you continue treating him as an outpatient? He's at the breaking point. He has no police record of violence. The only thing he was admitted here for is indecent exposure. Surely that's not an indication of violent tendencies. Something must be done now. The Supreme Court of this state has ruled that no one can commit anyone without their consent unless they are apprehended in the commission of a felony. Isn't there some way you can get him to sign himself in? He won't do that. You have no authority to judge anyone, doctor. This hospital could be sued for false arrest. Then you'll do nothing? My hands are tied.
Terry. Western Division, Sergeant Gregory. I need to speak to someone in charge here. Western Division, Sergeant Gregory. I want to report a dangerous man. Who's in charge? I am. Here, fill out this form and make sure you sign the complaint. I don't want to file a complaint. This man needs help. I can't help you, lady, till you fill out this paper. This man is dangerous. I know I'm a doctor. Lady, if he's beating up on you, come down here and file a complaint. No, I can't send anyone. The cars are all out on duty. No, lady, we don't look for lost dogs. Try the Humane Society. He has a room. No, I don't have the number. He has a room full of guns. Maybe he's got permits. He's armed and he's walking the streets. He's beating up on you. How could you be talking on the telephone? You have to act now or something terrible is going to happen. I can't process this complaint until you fill out this paper. Western Division, Sergeant Gregory. Who broke your windows? You don't know. Anyone outside? How long? How do I know? The cars are all out on duty.
you know, for even a movie that's that's from eighty seven or eighty eight, like that's that scene is still like very it's very uh it's hard to watch. It's it's sad. And especially when he's like stopped firing and you can just hear people like in pain and it's rough. And that also doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know why that scene is in there because of what they base this on. Right. But in context of this movie, this just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like why that place in particular, you know what exactly. I mean? So if he had gone into like the mechanic shop, okay, maybe. If he'd gone right. into, I don't know, the uh psychiatrist's home. Okay, sure, again, maybe. Yeah. But why this what looks like a Denny's, you know, what what purpose did that serve in context of this movie? There's yeah. no build up to explain any of that. Did the real shooter have a reason for going to McDonald's and uh, sort of? So the story was that uh, uh, he called mental health services and said that he was, you know, disturbed and he needed help. And because uh, it was a combination of they wrote down his name wrong and because he didn't sound like he was in enough distress, they didn't take it seriously. Ah. So, so he took his uh, wife and kid to the zoo, and after the zoo, they went to McDonald's and had like a good time, right? The next day, he like tells his wife and kid goodbye, walks into a McDonald's, and yeah, there you go. Jeez, yeah. did did he get killed by another customer in real life, or or uh, uh... no, by a SWAT a SWAT team? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's just uh, it, it's it's a pretty surprisingly heavy movie, you know. And I mean, it brings up some important topics, I think, for for something that could easily be overlooked as just being a really ridiculous movie with with wooden dialogue and wooden performances, you know. Well, see, it, it had I think they could have saved this movie if they like pan out at the end, and he was there yeah. with the broom again. Just kind of making pew yeah. pew noises, then yeah. it would all kind of tie back together. It wouldn't be as horrible, and it would be kind of it would kind of make sense. But right. otherwise, like you said, this was just gratuitous violence for the sake of having gratuitous uh, gratuitous violence. It yeah. made no sense whatsoever. Right. Yeah, it was just it was kind of kind of out of left field. I mean, they they could have at least added some sort of line that would have explained some sort of exposition as to why he would be going there but i mean i don't know yeah it's just uh mental illness is a, is a rough thing and i don't know the way that we handle it still isn't great uh also i think you know it's important to address that like it's, you know a thing that a popular talking point that um right wing people like to bring up when it comes to shootings is they always want to say, well, it's a mental health issue. They always want to say that it's a mental health issue. And and I'm not saying that they're wrong. It is. We don't deal with mental health in the best way. However, I mean, there are some weapons that I just I, I have a hard time finding a good reason for a civilian to have access to. Um, also, just our whole sort of gun worship in this country. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost like there, there's like a, a cult of the gun. I mean, you know, I mean, I have a gun, yeah. but it's only because there are other people who are crazy who have guns. You know what I mean? No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be using the the term crazy because we were just talking about how mental health is is serious and and you know and i'm not trying to demonize anybody but i don't mean people who necessarily have actual mental you know problems i i mean just gun nuts you know just people who are just obsessed with it and and i think a lot of that stems from like fear i think a lot of it is like you know you think about the republican platform for the last you know since time immemorial was fear and even even when even when trump came along and yeah he brought some stuff that 
Republicans hadn't really seen. Well, it's not that they hadn't seen it, but it's just this guy was saying the quiet parts out loud. And, but if you boil it all down to, to the basics, it's all just fear. And I think that when you push fear, when you, when that's your ticket, when you're on the fear ticket, then people, you, you'd be stupid not to be like, not to expect people to be afraid. So when you're pushing fear all the time, you have these people who try to pretend like they're not afraid, try to be macho. Um, but, but then they're clinging to their guns because deep down, like they're terrified. They don't know what to do. They're afraid that the other is going to come creeping out of the shadows and take everything from them. You know, it's sad. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's something that hasn't changed since this movie came out on to now, right. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, normally I like to try, try to say something funny Although I guess last time it kind of took a dark turn as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought that way down <laughs> and somber tone. But I think the sort of like uh, I don't have anything really hilarious to say this time. But I, I think like a serious note is that you know if people find themselves in you know having intrusive thoughts or or have trouble um, you know being feeling overwhelmed by by life or or just anything anything that you can't just you know talk out with just a friend or 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 a you know a partner definitely i i'm a huge advocate for people getting help and i think that we're with as many problems as we have i think we're, we're at least getting to a point where we can encourage people um to seek out help and and most people are on board with that most people think that that's a good idea because it's not a sign of weakness and that's that's a big thing yeah. i think some people struggle with is especially generationally i think older people who have issues like this like they don't want to be a burden or they don't want to look weak or they don't want to you know it didn't mean that they're any less of a person or whatever and that's sad because that's just from generations of of negativity being beaten into them but because that's how you know people we if people acted funny you threw them in the nut house that's how things used to be oh, and uh attic. yeah yeah we're locked in the yes yes there are so many movies where where that happens but i mean that also happened for real yeah you know and, and we made a lot of strides i i do have to say like we could do better but at least or at least we're not living in Reagan's America anymore. I mean, I guess that's something. It's a thing. Maybe. Yeah. Of course, his his uh, tainted legacy lives on in, in various forms, but you know, it could be worse. I guess it could be worse. There are worse timelines that we could live in. You know. You could be trapped in a hotel with maybe ghosts slowly going right. by. Right. I like. The the shining ripoff music that they had whenever he was yeah. doing something nefarious, I like I like that. And the bell up, and one thing the uh, right before the biker gives him the gun, his shadow is definitely the bellhop. So what they was thinking yeah. is maybe this whole time he wasn't talking to the bellhop, maybe he was talking to the biker. Maybe they had yeah. more of a relationship this whole time, and that's what he perceived the guy as. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. It's too bad we can't interview the people who made this movie. Yeah. And get to the bottom of this. Well, maybe we should have seen reading. that last thing was so maybe maybe there were no ghosts or something. Maybe he was like putting a layer on top of the bikers and that's why they were like, Man, this guy's crazy, blah 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 because they've been interacting yeah. with him this whole time. Right. I think it's pretty weird that yeah, they had that scene where the biker takes him to the bar and is just like, you know, talking to him and everything, and then they let him go, and then later he gets on the machine. I don't know, it's, it's all strange. I, I feel... That's what I think. So yeah, maybe like they it, had more of a relationship that whole time. Yeah, I see what you mean, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel... Also, I kind of feel like maybe the biker, that particular biker, the one that looked like Rambo, kind of, maybe he is also in a way like something that because he's kind of the opposite of harry really because harry is very like 
well terrified of everything and yeah. and you know sort of a I don't know just a person that's like just sort of it's kind of mild and weak and maybe the the biker's kind of like a representation projection of, of who he wants to be yeah as a projection of like this machismo that he wishes that he possessed or something i don't know i don't know it's hard to say it's hard to say who was and was not real or what actually yeah. was happening yeah right and then the whole thing with the body in the bathtub and his brother just didn't see it so you just assume that he didn't really kill his wife but then again why didn't she come by but maybe it's just because she just didn't care about him at all really um you know who knows We'll never know, probably. But maybe we should reach out to the creators. Maybe send them an email or something. Maybe we can track them down. Yeah, track I'll down the shot. director. Uh, the director was, let's see, uh, Mark G. Gillis. Gillius. Uh, and written by Philip Jordan, who also wrote uh, Johnny Guitar, Detective Story, Broken Lance, The Man for Laramie, El Cid, King of Kings, and Battle of the Bulge. I haven't seen any of those. Me neither. But I mean, he's got some credits. Maybe he's maybe he's still kicking around. Maybe he's still. Yeah, I would be interested to know what the hell was actually supposed to be happening in this movie. Yeah, it would be interesting to get like an inside point of view. I mean, or maybe some of the actors are still alive. I don't know. I'm sure they probably. I mean, they wouldn't be that. They'd be older, but they could still. Yeah. Be I mean, it was just the yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 So that'll be something that I'll do. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and track these people down, and maybe we'll talk about it if they if they respond. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about it another time. I don't know, but yeah. I think that this movie, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a little different than what we normally show, and I think that it's different in some good ways. Um, and I maybe it needed to be gratuitous. Maybe there needed to be a lot of violence because it didn't it didn't portray it in some way that was fanciful or looked like it was like a cool action you know what i mean S scenario it was just a, a slog thing that happened yeah it was just a horrible thing that happened and and then also once harry realizes what he's done and he you can see the pain in his eyes and he you know when he's having his lucid moment and he gets gunned down and it's like, well, but what other end game would there be then? You know, how else could it possibly there's not there's no other there's no way out at that point for him, or I'm sure he feels that way. No, there was yeah. no further conclusions that could be drawn. It was they had their chance to save him and everybody failed. Right. Including himself. Yeah. Exactly. His family, his doctor, his wife, just the society. Lady in unfortunately. Right. Yeah. And we all as a society need to do better, I think, you know, when it comes to helping people when they need help. And that's, I think, the thing that we need the most is just people, more collaborations, you know, doing better as human beings and as custodians of the planet. So is that what we're ending this on? I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. still kind of grim, but, you know. Yeah, oh, well, but I think that there's, there's, but there's room for knowing that like it's it is possible you know i'm not i'm not a pie in the sky kind of kind of person which i'm sure people could get could guess uh but i do think that more people are becoming aware of like how important mutual aid can be and and the, the importance of a strong community uh i don't really have that where I live, I hate most of the people that I live with because they're a lot of them are very violent and and uh, or they're either violent or loud or obnoxious. But you know, maybe that maybe I'm just looking at them through tired eyes. Maybe I need to adjust how I'm looking at society. I don't know. All right, so people can do better job at being people unless you just kind of suck as a person. Yes. There yeah. we go. All right, that's what, what we're ending this on, folks. <laughs> yes. On that note, I've been oh, no. Condor. I have Crow, <laughs> and this was Bloody Wednesday. So we'll see you next time, folks. Ka -ka same bird time, some same. I can't even talk. I said some. Same bird time, same bird channel. Some other time. 
some other time some some of the time some of the time sometime at, at that at that time we will be that thing yes <laughs> the time the time of day the time in the day it's time for